Final, final video that I'm going to be putting together for rigging is we're going to be exploring Advanced Skeleton 5. So what I'm going to do is let's fire up uh, Safari. Let's um, Advanced Skeleton 5. This is a really, really cool rigging tool um, for Maya. Um, I cannot stress enough that there's a bit of a workflow involved in setting it up. It's free. Um, there's a, a free version and there's a version you can purchase which gives you additional support from the creators but there's a free version um, it's very very good um, but there's a bit of a workflow involved so that's what we're going to do there's a bit of a workflow involved in installing it initially so as well so this is the icon that you'll you'll get here once it's installed um, it's a plugin so you won't necessarily need to um, stress too much about how you go about installing it you need it would just literally be a mel script or a python script that you'd need to plug in and um, so hit this five this is going to bring up this new ui and basically you work from the very top of this um setup so you've got this option here um you basically have to you work your whole way down so um this preparation section is optional but recommended for clean file and workflow clean click group your model so that you have one top node and name this group geo so clean the model Model clean, create. But I'm not too fussed about that because we've already done that window. So if we look in the outliner, it's created a group geo. So we'll pull this down here so we can see this. Um, then save your clean model. Also, you can check the symmetry model check. Check. It's checked the model for symmetry. Good. Um, create a file rig. Um, so what it's going to do is one and say not saved. So it's going to force us to save the scene. So um clean character okay and then reference in the model um we've just created so we've created a new scene and we're going to re-reference in this so we're looking for a clean character reference that in the reason that we're referencing them in this file is exactly like what i mentioned is before it means that it gives us further options to change the mesh further down the production pipeline so it's something to really really point out Okay, so once we're finished with the pre setup, we then close this uh, drop down and we'll then go to the fit setup. So now we want to change this from Gorilla. There's lots of selections here that you can pick. We're going to choose biped and we're just going to hit um, where we are biped import. Boom, there we go. It's made a skeleton. Lovely. It's tiny, tiny weeny. So we just need to scale this up a touch. I'm not too fussed about uh, scaling. That's fine. And again, I need to let's just go to display um animation uh, joint size let's just make these a little bit smaller so it's a little bit easier to kind of see what we're looking at right so i just need to scale this whole kind of thing down so it matches up a little bit better to the hips and stuff okay that's fine this again read the nodes as you can see here it's set to uh, mill i'm going to change this to world space um it shouldn't really matter too much i'm just going to pull this up you can see what's kind of handy is a lot of it lines up so you can see this joint here is the jaw i've pulled in just a biped you can pull in other options here you could biped game um biped bendy quadruped etc etc so there's loads and loads of options so let's just hit this option over here and it's made it into a reference layer so it's pretty useful let's just grab this joint position this up to the eye this should pretty much be to the tip of the head this to the jaw that's for the neck just hit d to change the pivot point and you'll be thinking well what's all this this is just all craziness but obviously we've looked at a lot of different rigging setups now so you should have a really good understanding of the different techniques available to you in terms of rigging and setting your characters up for animation um, for games um, and you also should be able to see that there are a number of different options available to you. So don't just stick with one. Um, and because basically this is a fit skeleton, all we're doing is we're, we're just lining this up. And it's its own little proprietary tool. I'm not too fussed about rotating the joints. Um, all we're doing is positioning this skeleton roughly in place i'm not really that fussed about how accurate it is this is purely to give you an idea of how um we would then 
basically kind of go about this particular um, workflow and setup. So I'm giving you a number of options. So we've got human IK within my, we've got the quick rig, we've got quick rig step by step. We've got all the um, kind of automated tools that we've been looking at. Um, and then we've got this as, a, as another option. So there's quite a few. And then you've, you've also been looking at how to create a character rig yourself. So it's given you a really broad understanding of how to actually go about rigging characters as opposed to just um, looking at the option of where you literally tick a box because ultimately that isn't going to show you anything other than ticking a box. It's it's not particularly useful so it's showing you that there's a, there are a number of options out there and um, when it comes to character rigging there are other options as well you could use as a Mixamo um, where you can get online character rigs provided for you and it, or again very automated but again anything that's automated you've previously seen with the rigging tools uh, results will vary and they invariably do vary quite considerably so it's something to bear in mind um, so we're just gonna um, adjust this just based on what we're trying to achieve here so I'm just gonna position this a little bit more and every skeleton you can see it differs very much from the rig that um, we'd produced in terms of the hierarchy ever so slightly different but again there's no sort of right or wrong way when it comes to character rigging it's what works for the character so I'm just going to position these out D my bad that was S by accident pull this in now we'll go let's position this so like this and then just grab this pull this back to the knee see there you've got the heel so basically we need to create like a um, toe end pivot pinky toe big toe probably about there and then we're creating this sort of shape basically what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to have like a kind of foot roll effect Hit D again my bad and so yes yeah, so this will allow us to have a foot roll type effect Right, so we're pretty happy with um, this sort of fit skeleton. Um, and then we just move down to the next element, which is um, auto orient. Let's just leave this. We're, we're kind of done with this now. So let's just close this out. Now we'll go to build advanced skeleton. So see, it's, it's doing its thing. And basically what it's gonna do now is it is going to build the skeleton. So you can see there's a little bit of a process that's going on. It's building all of the custom controls for you guys. It's putting the clavicles in there. It's putting all the controls in. Um, fully automated and it's free. Um, and it, again, it's setting everything up much like what you guys have done with the pole vectors and um, with the controls. Again, just very automated. Um, yeah. So the next option would build our um, skeleton. So we can close this down deform skinning so select objects to deform then select the deform joints so so select the object to deform which is the mesh then plus select deform joints right okay so windows outliner so if we need to select the mesh and then we need to select um, let's go to show and then sorry shading x-ray joints and then select the skeleton and then go to the row and then set smooth bind options so it's basically going to open up the bind options that we'll have so again we've been looking at um, geodesic voxel and dual quaternion and we'll set the max influences to four and then hit bind skin you can see here in deform you've got a number of options that you can use you've got deform option one deform option two 
option three, option four. The final thing to do is delta mush. So basically, you select skin to objects and then um, harden weight and then apply delta mush, which is basically just going to apply its own little um, deformation hybrid type system under the character rig so you should get slightly more um, usable deformation from your character without having to do so much work and there's also a, an option just be below that uh, use WB Delta Mush so it's a, a plugin developed by um, Weber Huang so you could also use that and then apply the Delta Mush you could have that tick box turned on and then hit apply Delta Mush add now Oh well, Lo plugins not loaded. Big deal. Um, okay, geometry skeleton. If you wanted to, you could have that. Geometry muscular. Um, if you wanted to start looking at really advanced muscle systems and skeletal systems, you would add these. So let's have a little look. See what happens. My is probably going to spontaneously combust at this time. So frame rate mismatch. Let's see what's uh, kind of going on here. So there we go, it's created a skeleton inside of, um, with a tiny weenie ribcage, my god, he needs to see the doctor, in fact he's got his pelvis wrapped around his shoulders, maybe we should delete that, that doesn't work very well, um, so yeah, might be worth a look at a later time, just not right now, um, and let's see what we're getting with this. So you've got, you can see a number of controls. Oh, oh, oh. So yeah, fully automated. It's its own separate. You can see how the pole vectors have oddly been kind of flipped around a little bit. But this rig is like amazing. Obviously, by the skin, um, which again you just um, paint the skin with. No big deal. But the amount of controls that we're getting is um, pretty ridiculous. We're getting controls for the hips. Check that out. Ooh. Ooh. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a whole kind of range of um, flexibility with this character rig. Um, uh, this, you could, for those people that like to work um, FK, you could work, I mean, at the minute it's set, you can see the FK IK blend. If you set this to 10, I think it is, it'll set it up to work in IK. You can see that little cube control that uh, we've got everybody kind of set up and using. So there you've got your whole FK IK and your pole vector, much the same as what you guys were looking at. Um, and also, if you select this, you can then switch back to full blown, horrible, um, very dated. FK, but again, the, they've both got the uses. They're both very, very useful um, in their own right. Um, so again, you might be thinking like, okay, Chris, this is great. It's adding loads of controls, but we're going to take this a step further again. So obviously, we're looking at this. So this is just the motion system of um, what we're going to do with this character. You know, there's a lot of flexibility in here. We've got um, sort of swivel, um, swivel of the knee. And this is these are all done via um, custom controls, so um, sort of um, driven keys effectively. You can set stretchy off and on. You can have uh, foot roll, so there you're getting that foot roll effect type of thing going on. So really, really useful for walk cycles, that kind of thing. Again, you can take, see this rocking kind of motion of the toes. Really, really useful and a very, very quick kind of setup as well. So it's, I'd recommend looking at it. It's a really, really, really cool tool. But the main thing that I have to stress is that you you have to really understand the whole rigging structure, um, how the hierarchy of everything should be working really before we start looking at that. And then obviously you've got the clavicle controls as well. But um, so on the whole, I mean, it's it's pretty decent. It's just the main thing. Is that it needs some work with the skin weights and that's always the case for all of these rigs it's very rare that you'll have a character rig where you're gonna get a rig that just works and you can see there you're getting a lot of control and a lot of definition and performance from the rig um, 
So yeah, you can see there's a, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do with it. The next stage with this would be looking at the facial controls and the facial controls are pretty, pretty cool. So that'll be what we'll look at in the next video. So the great thing about this again is what I will do is I'll show polygons, hide all this, hide the joints. Um, and then because we should just, let's just hide everything and just show curves. And then we should be it just um, go through each of these and kind of zero them out. Like I need a rotation. We should be able to get this back to zero just by um, rotating these values out. Now we'll go and see there how it's starting to look a little bit more like um, a character kind of you would kind of expect it to. So it's. Um, yeah, and because it's it's set up in a very advanced, pretty pretty cool kind of way. So yeah, we just need to zero out all these uh, rotations just to try to uh, go for, go back to show polygons. There we go. So we're getting a little bit closer to um, where it needs to kind of be. You can see there, it's just switching between. IK and FK. So IK is inverse kinematics, FK is forward kinematics. So there we go, just grab this, push this back to zero, and then zero these out. And you can see here we're getting something that very closely resembles um, the T pose. What we'll look at in the next video now, I'm going to save this out as um, advanced skeleton start um, what we'll look at in the next video is the facial rigging um, and you probably need a little bit more um, data with like internals and mouths and things like that because you can go really really far with this um, you can do some really cool stuff so I'd, I'd recommend you just do a little bit of research into that yourself advanced skeleton 5 it's really really cool and um, really useful right okay I'm gonna save that out and I'll see you in the next video